pastor a great round of applause. Anybody happy about Jesus this morning? He's my best friend. I dare you to go to the neighbor next to you and just shake the hand like you're trying to shake it off. Say, Jesus is my best friend. He's my best friend. Bread when I'm hungry. Water when I'm thirsty. Friend when I'm friendless. Mother when I'm motherless. Look at your neighbor and say, he's my best friend. He walks with me and he talks with me. He tells me. I'm his very own. Grab that hand, amen. Grab that hand as we go into corporate prayer. Father, we just thank you for the privilege of imparting your word to your people. I'm so unworthy. Don't even feel worthy to stand before your people. I'm humbled by my own proclivities that you would even use someone like me. But God, I've been in your enterprise now for over 40 something years, almost born in the church. And God, I've, you've risen me up. You've promoted me to be a man of God and a bishop. And for that, I'm thankful. But God, I ask you to stand up in me and let my voice be a trumpet. Let my voice be your voice. Let my words be your words. Bless my friend, Bishop Kelly Wood, as he rests and relax and recover from the convention. Help him in his travels. We want to see him safe when he gets back home. Amen. Keep all of his possessions in safe custody. God, we thank you for this great church that you birthed out of the man of God's loins. Thank you for the vision, God. And though it tarry, we will see hallelujah the fulfillment of that vision we thank you god our daughters and sons will get married in that church oh god we will get baptized in that church believers shall get saved in that church we thank you for the visionary without a vision the people perish now god bless us with this word on today you know who is here you know who needs a breakthrough you know he who needs a hookup a holy hookup you know who needs an uplift you know who needs a breakout. God, move today. We we'll give your name praise, honor, and glory in the name of Jesus. Now loose that neighbor's hand and give God some praise now. Before you sit down, you know, I, I majored in music, but because I was gifted to play in the sanctified church and never read a note in my life, when I got to Long Beach State, I had to change my major. Amen. So I went into speech and communication. But what I know, what I found out about music is that uh, before ever great, any great performance, is not by chance we're in a the theater today, before any great a performance, you clap and you applaud. And at the end of the performance, you clap and applaud. But when we talk about praise, your hands can't talk. Praise has to do with what comes out. Oh, way back there, y'all with me. I said praise has to do with what comes out of your mouth. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Man, uh, your husband, your, your man making a hundred thousand or more a year, you driving a Mercedes, uh, you in a four bedroom, y'all ain't talking to me, swimming pool outside, jacuzzi, you wearing Donna Karen, Martin Luther King persons, that, the MK, that ain't Martin Luther King. <laughs> Your husband then hooked you up, and then he come through the door and you just start to clapping. No, he wanna hear Big Daddy, you the man. He wanna, it's in your mouth. Come on here, somebody. Look at your neighbor say, it's in your mouth. I dare you to throw your head back and to square your shoulders and give God some glory in here. Everybody. Let's lift him higher. Higher than your fields. Higher than your circumstances. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Since y'all ready, y'all ready, y'all ready. Y'all ready. Y'all already ready. I love this church. Look at somebody say, I came to do it. I just I got all dressed up to get all messed up. I want my mascara just so it'll run. Amen. Listen, I got a lot to do in a short time. Amen. This book literally, 
Listen, brothers and sisters, it took me five years to write it. Me, myself, was a victim of jealousy all my life. Wondered why I had a, a propensity for women a kind. Even when I was a child, my mother told me uh, she would have her girlfriends over uh, to, to play bridge. And I would come out of my room and crawl on my knees and go under the table and just be rubbing the, the ladies' legs, you know. Just... <laughs> my mama said, well, what are you doing? Yes. I, I had a propensity all my life. Uh, I, I had to fight. Men were always jealous of me, jealous of my gift. I didn't even know I had charisma. Sometimes you don't even know your importance until you have an enemy. You didn't even know you was all that until you had a couple of haters and some men. You just minding your own business. Am I talking to anybody? It took me five years after so much I went through in my ministry and at the hand of other preachers. Wouldn't it be wonderful if you went to a conference and the preachers got on the altar? That's a whole other. That's a whole Preachers. David said it was my familiar friend who we broke bread with. That, that lifted up his heel against me and kicked me. Amen. And so, after going through so much and God anointed me to write this book, I'm telling you, it will free you from your victimizer. You will understand why jealousy is prevalent, especially in the African American community. Brought over from the motherland, we were taught to hurt and harm one another. We were taught to fight and be in competitiveness against our brother. In this chapter, one of the chapters in the book talks about competition breeds division. Competition breeds division. If we're if we're to be a body of Christ, and the, and Paul says the body uh, fitly joined together, each joint supplies the need of another. Then why is the body so fragmented? And the body is so fragmented because we we don't understand. I need you. You bring something to the table that I don't possess. Matter of fact, the word jealousy by etymology of the word means uh, to covet what somebody else's own, to covet what someone else owns. So whenever someone is jealous of you, whenever you show up, you remind them of the deficit they have in themselves because they don't understand their own brilliance. They don't understand their own giftedness. Why are you wasting time hating on me for what God has given me when God has given you something too? And this book will help you. It would help you identify some triggers. It would help you even heal. A reason why Jesus said, Father, forgive them. How many of you, when people do bad things to you, you think they, they know exactly what they're doing? Raise your hand. How many of you say, uh-uh, they know what they were doing? Let me tell you something. If they knew how anointed you were, if they knew the gift you were, if they knew you were praying for their family, praying for their children, if they knew who you were, they wouldn't be doing you like they're doing you. So every offense has ignorance tied to it. So you have to say like Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. Let's $15 in the rear. This book will change your life. I'll be back there to sign some books. And we brought some music with us. Songs we wrote and written down through the years. It will bless you. The Preacher's Music Group. I'll see the product table. And I'll be back there at the end of service. Are y'all ready to hear the word? Yeah. Let's go. Let's go to Exodus. Amen. Exodus, the 14th chapter and the 13th verse. Our, 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 uh, Sermon today, you already know pastor has been talking about a praise of thanksgiving. It is a shame to come into uh, the worship and not have a thankful heart. Amen. Come on here, somebody. Amen. And uh, uh, those of you that were thankful, I, I believe how, this is how we do it. When you praise God here, he handles your home. He handles your business back at home. You take care of his business, he handles your business. What you do here and now uh, it, it is so weighty. It helps you understand that all you can give God is a praise. Can you say amen? amen. Exodus 14 and 13, uh, and, and it reads, King James says, Moses, and Moses said to the people, fear not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you this day. For the Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more forever the because says uh the egyptians you see today 
you will see them no more forever. For a few moments, I want to talk about closure. Shake your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, we're going to get some closure on some stuff today. Exodus. Exodus is a recount of Israel's departure from Egypt, as well as an historical account of its inception as a nation, free from the tyranny of its oppressor. You can only imagine the brutality and the senseless suffering they endured as slaves. Slavery has and always will be big business. The oppressor will continue to exploit his subordinates while expressing his superiority over them by mistreatment, whippings, and violating their God given human rights. The physical damage that slavery causes can't be compared to the damaging psychological effects that linger long after the victims are set free. Slavery in any form works against the very core of a person's value system. Some slaves, believe, uh, believe it or not, uh, thrive while under tyranny. They do this by giving up their self-worth and buying into the belief that they are subhuman. And because they have now a warped sense of cognitive reasoning, they in some way believe they deserve whatever abrasive assault their master has given them. The Exodus story is so profound because it reminds us that none of God's created beings deserve to be oppressed nor terrorized. God designed us in his own image. We were made to be free, free to choose, free to love, free to plan and create in order to make an impact on those who are following us, which is the next generation. We were not meant to be constricted. We were meant to be free. And when freedom is taken away from you, it inhibits your creativity. You lose your ability to dream and see yourself the way God sees you. If the oppressed only knew what the oppressor knows, some of us didn't see it coming. The, the tyrant only reveals his true self when he begins to see your potential. At that moment is when all hell breaks loose. Exodus first chapter 7 verse the Bible kind of says it like this and there arose a Pharaoh that knew not Joseph and when he saw the Jews multiplying he said let us enslave them lest they become mightier than us I wonder who see you coming but you don't see they coming listen listen if you're getting offended if you're being opposed if stumbling blocks are being put in your way that means the enemy sees you coming you know you're in a building process, right? You know you, you're building God's work, amen, in Berkeley. And so the enemy sees you coming. So there's going to be some hiccups. And, 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 and there's going to be some stumbling blocks in the building process. When Joshua gets to Jericho, the Bible says the city was shut up. That means they were closing windows, locking doors, closing the gates because they heard and knew they were coming. Whenever somebody oppose you, God Almighty, that means they know you coming. Listen here, listen here. Anybody know that you're going to be triumphant in this season because the devil is trying to send entrapments against you? When you see them closing doors, that's when you ought to shout. Because that means they wouldn't be trying to shut you out if they didn't know that you're coming to get your stuff. Hallelujah. Let's look at our first point. Amen. And we're moving. The first point is this chapter had to end. Look at your neighbor and say, that chapter had to end. The chapter of pain in your life, the chapter of unproductivity in your life, that chapter had to end. And this is what haters don't understand. People that celebrate your downfall, people that celebrate when bad things happen to you, what they don't know is your life is a book. And though there might be some bad stuff in the first chapter, we learn how to turn the page. Because there's some more chapters after this one. Look at your neighbor and say, there's some more chapters, boo, after this. You saw me get divorced, but you need to see me get remarried. Oh. Stop praying for your enemies to die. Pray that God keep them alive because they saw your down going. But they need to see your comeback, Lord. Tell somebody say, this chapter had to end. 
One of the dreadful things about being traumatized is you can never express your true feelings to your antagonizer. There